Welcome back. It's still uh, TV3 New Day and we're continuing our conversation from last week where a young woman narrated her deal in the hands of two men who raped her um, on different occasions. One was when she had just completed senior high school and the other was just about a year ago, also with an old classmate who she thought she could trust. Um, following that, we've seen a lot of uh, tweets and the conversation has been ongoing on social media as well. Uh, there was a hashtag, say no to rape, um, share your story, and people were just telling their stories. There was another angle to it where the boys now also, or the men also now started telling their story of how they also had been violated by some women and they were asking for justice. Uh, unfortunately, the law um, doesn't say anything against you know, um, rape when it comes to men. It's only for women and defilements for minors as well. So in the studios um, and joining me on Zoom and Skype as well, I have Femi Ade Tola. She's the founder and executive director of the Fair Justice Initiative, where they offer low-cost pro bono legal services for cases that meet uh, their spe specialization criteria. And so she joins us. And also we have Dr. Newman Arthur, who is a clinical psychologist. Good to have both of you join me on air this morning. And good morning to both of you. Dr. Newman, I'll start off with you. I'm not sure if you caught that conversation, but the girl is still traumatized. The first um, incident happened about 11 years ago. She could not report it. And then it happened again about a year ago. Now, when she reported to Dofsu and to the police station, they said they really could not um, follow through with the case because there was no clear case of struggle, no torn clothes, no bed sheet. But she says even when she tries to have a bath, she's scared to take off her clothes because she is traumatized from the experience. Run me through, you know, um, what happens psychologically to someone who is sexually violated. Uh, you know, all over the world, I think that our attitude towards rape uh, is, is not right because we, we think that sex is just an activity. Sex goes beyond an activity, you know, and especially for women, sex goes beyond just an activity. For a man, it may, it may just be the activity, but women have intimacy and not sex, right? So yeah. everything around sex, Everything around sex determines how a woman responds to sex. Mm. So what you do before and after, not even during. A lot of men, is during the sexual activity itself. That is when they find some pleasure. But for women, before and after. That is why even if you're married and depending on what you do before or after the sexual activity, the woman may be satisfied or not. Mm -hmm. And also sex, sex is a representation on many levels for many different women on various levels even in different cultures right so sex may be a valuable representation to someone yeah. it may be uh, it may represent treasure and honor it represents a, a life a security it represents everything you know to different women on different levels and even men so anybody who who has a certain sexual activity without the consent of the other person. It's a big thing. It is mm. not just an activity. So even, uh, even trying to say that there's no evidence here and there, obviously um, there are some women who put rape on men you know, for various reasons. But we have to really look at the impact of sex on, on the individual. It goes just beyond. Some people may even think that, ah, but it's sex and mm -hmm. whether, you, whether it was, uh, uh, what do you call it? Whether it was um, Consensual? Uh, agreed or not, yeah. you know, you should enjoy it. You know, that, that, is, that is not it. And any man who would, who would have sex with a woman without her consent is a fool. The person is a coward. The person is, is, is wicked. The person, you know, why should that happen? Mm -hmm. And, you know, the reason why people even don't report and all that is because majority of the cases there the abuse the sexually abused knows the other person maybe it's an uncle or a father or yeah. a friend or someone they trust you know and more, more, uh, less than 40 percent or 30 percent of to anybody who has gone through some sexual abuse of a sort including realm are likely to report because of the fact that they won't trust me mm -hmm. the stigma around it even fear of telling a lot of girls who have been raped and they are afraid to tell their parents yeah. because they are going to ask them all kinds of questions. So but is no that even has, right? 
you know, and not to cut you, but we, we tend to ask, what were you doing in the person's room? What, what were you wearing? And all those things. Should we not go beyond that? Because really, if it's about what you're wearing, then why are children defiled? So, so it's sex. There is no excuse for rape. You, you can't explain it. Not you even a mental challenge, maybe? You know, you can't explain it. There is no excuse for, for raping someone. We, yeah. we can't, regardless of the reasons you give to it, it is just not right. Mm -hmm. It is not, it's just not okay. You have yeah. no permission into anybody's pants without permission. All you right. know, and so, um, and so, uh, and so the impact goes beyond just the physical activity, right? And that is why we talk about the psychological impact of even, even rape and all that. Yeah. And probably we'll talk about it. We definitely will. Hold on. Let me let me cross over to Femi. Femi, before I even speak to you as a lawyer, let's have a woman-to-woman -woman talk. Why have we gotten to this point where it's so easy to take advantage of a woman, not care whether she says yes or no, and, you know, some men feel like you're a woman and I should take advantage of you. What, what has gone wrong? Our, cult, our, our cultural settings have allowed it. You know, some men have a sense of entitlement to women, mm. be it because of their wealth or their power or just being in a position of um, age over um, a younger girl. Yeah. Um, so people feel like they're entitled to, so like, how dare you say no to me or they're used to getting what they want. And I think um, to an extent, us women themselves cultivate it in the sense that in a home you realize that um, we um, women will ask the girls to do you know the home chores and mm -hmm. stuff. so it creates those stereotypes for women and the boys are you know served or you know um, they get their preference etc so it starts from that very young but hasn't that changed in women. recent times to, as much as it's changed it still exists mm. you know so I don't think we've finally gotten rid of it um, you have a lot of women who feel um, they have self-esteem issues, etc. So all of that plays into um, their, the situation in which they're taken advantage of, etc. Mm -hmm. And like Dr. Newman said, there's no excuse for rape. Absolutely yeah. none. No is no, you know. And um, if I can um, explain per the law, yeah. you know, section 97 to 99, of the um, Criminal Offences Act Act 29 covers the issue of rape. Now, rape is the um, carnal, um, the um, carnal knowledge of a female 16 years and above, mm -hmm. you know, without her consent. So consent is key. And um, the proof that um, in in rape trials, there has to be evidence of um, um, carnal knowledge. Yeah. And it's deemed to have been proven at the least um, of penetration, you okay. know. But like Dr. Newman is saying, it goes beyond just the penetration, you know? Um, even the fact that you put a woman in a situation where she's uncomfortable or mm -hmm. you, know, you force yourself, et cetera, that itself. So I find that the, the section 97 to 99 is a bit limiting, you mm -hmm. know, in um, encapsulating all the, the facets that goes into, uh, with rape. Okay. Yeah. Well, you're talking about culture and how that is indirectly uh, promoting rape culture in society but also yeah. could it be that maybe it's time more women speak up when they're being um you know disrespected someone sees you and says oh i like your shape oh i like your backside and those comments sometimes we just smile and you're torn between saying thank you or feeling offended because you're not sure um you know what the person means by that should we now start letting men understand that it's not right to make comments about my body and all of that because maybe that's where it stems from we have to we have to and the problem is we're not saying it people somebody will compliment you compliment you in quotes and say oh you know you've got a very nice body that's offensive okay but when you, you say know, it's offensive they act like oh true huh? i mean i'm just complimenting you so why are you taking offense yeah but it is offensive you know you can't look at a woman if you look at a woman and you admire her, I, I think you, it's not something for you to say to make somebody uncomfortable, you know? And we perpetuate, I mean, when we start to smile, we say, oh, thank you. You know, you hear an older person complimenting a young girl who is just, you know, of age, you know, mm -hmm. maybe barely 17, 18. And we think, oh, yes, she's growing up to be a very beautiful girl. And stuff. the conversation has to be beyond that, you know? Yeah. It's like, what are you doing? Like, what do you do for school? What do you want to do? What are your plans, et cetera? As opposed to it always being physical. 
you know. Yeah. And um, another thing um, Dr. Newman mentioned that I agree also is the fact that the stigma attached to reporting rape. Sometimes in certain cases, you find the mothers themselves saying, you know, um, let's take the let's case out of it. court. Yeah. Let's settle it out of court. I don't want all the attention about it, etc. So a lot of these men get away with it because nobody's willing to go the full nine yards. You know, just last week, a, a group of girls, you know, had said to me, that um somebody in a position of trust that they were comfortable with had you know assaulted several um of them you know mm -hmm. different friends etc and i was like so startled i found out that one of them had told their mother and my question was so what did the mother do about it mm -hmm. nothing one of them's mother wanted to approach and then the other girls said no i don't want you to approach you know so mm. it's it's a big issue and the stigma attached to it people don't feel comfortable to report it and i think also like you were saying, uh, the girl that you were using as an example, yeah. going to job school, they have to be sensitized on how they treat rape victims. It's bad enough what you've been through, and it's even worse for you to have to go through the whole thing all over again by being asked questions like, what were you wearing? What you're wearing mm -hmm. is no justification for anybody to rape you. At all. So I just... Absolutely. I disagree with the, you know, the thoughts that it's because women are wearing short skirts, etc. It is not an invitation to rape. At all. Okay. Dr. Newman, I, I know you've touched on this already, but she says what you're wearing is no invitation to rape. But at the same time, you know, sometimes we wear certain clothes that looks enticing to a certain level. So you have a lot of flesh and skin showing. Indirectly, does that not give off the signal that, okay, so maybe I find you attractive and I'm trying to use my body to entice you in any way? Uh, I think that those things um, it, it's not it's not a justification for rape. Okay. The only thing it does is that it creates a certain kind of culture where women are portrayed as sexual objects and not as people who uh, deserve to be respected. Mm. Because if you look at even on our social media in you know, our landscape and all the things we see on the internet and all that music videos and all that you realize that most of the time even those who are doing those music videos the men are totally covered the mm -hmm. women are scantily dressed yeah right if you look at um what do you call it if you even look at sometimes even an advert a toothpick yeah. mm -hmm. and and there's and there's a naked woman by it and what is, what has a naked woman got to do with a toothpick mm -hmm. you know so we have a, there's a certain culture mindsets that women are just sexual objects portrayed in all kinds of move, uh, and, uh, movies and all that and you know all those things all those things give a certain perception about about women and uh, what they represent and all that so you then know? should and women so consider it, it a certain culture yes mm -hmm. should women consider how they dress even though we're saying there's no uh, justification for it so so when we say rape there is no whether the person is naked on your bed or whether they are dressed scantily. There, there is no justification for it. So you how do we control um, the men? Where does it start you know, from? It, it starts from it starts from childhood. You know your ability to control your sexual urges starts from childhood. You know what you are exposing yourself to. I have also noticed that any man who feeds on sexually ex explicit stuff, like pornography and all kinds of sexual, other sexual behaviors, they are likely to treat women as, as sexual objects. Because all those things influence men and how they think about situations. But it is, it is still no justification for, for raping any, any, mm. any, any, any person. Okay. But you would have to also realize that, you have to realize that there is a culture that has been created that sexualizes women. It, it makes women look like sexual objects. And that culture influences all kinds of pervasive sexual behaviors. Mm. That is inappropriate for us for our society. All right. Right. And, and, and the media is also part is also part. If you don't if you don't put those things in your music videos, nobody will buy it. But they say sex sells. But, so that's why sometimes they put... and, and, so, and so that culture influences sexual uh, uh, some abnormal sexual behaviors. But it is still no justification okay. for raping any woman. It, it, still, yeah. Femi, let me come to you. Now speaking to you as a lawyer. So if I've not gotten a medical report and it's taken maybe two or three years for me to be bold enough to come out and tell my story, can I still get justice in the absence of you evidence? Can. You can. You can. How? I, because, you know... Um, 
if you if there's no statute of limitation um, on on rape, if you bring a charge like three years later, etc., they look at the corroborated evidence. You know, um, did you confide in somebody? Um, you wrote it in your journal. Um, you went to the hospital at the time, or etc. You had an STD. All those um, things will be considered mm. by the court in reaching a, a conclusion. But the thing is, I think the biggest factor is the ability of people to be able to report rape, you know? Okay. I think the media also, you know, I just read something in the news the other day about a young boy who had been taken advantage mm -hmm. of by his teacher um, who was doing the online virtual learning, et cetera, and coming to the house and having a natural carnal, carnal knowledge of him. And I was very proud of his mother for taking the case up, but the media reported the mother's name. So mm. when you report the mother's name, it's not so difficult to find out who the victim is. Yeah. So we all have a part to play in destigmatizing um, the issue about rape and encouraging people to actually speak up. If you go to Josu and um, whoever you're speaking to, the officer, et cetera, is not receptive, you're going to cower into a shell. You're not going to mm -hmm. be able to continue. If they're going to ask you questions like, what are you wearing? Why did you go there, et cetera? You're going to feel like it's your fault. And yeah. that's when people get into all these psychological issues, which trail them the whole, their whole life, you know? And um, I really think that it's important that we get to the point where it's not only the women that we are asking, because every time people have a conversation about rape, it's about, so women. what do the women have to do? Mm -hmm. It's about time we hold men accountable. What do the men have to stop doing to stop um, rape? You know, yeah. what do they have to realize and how do they have to put checks and balances and how they speak to women? And like Dr. Newman says, the whole idea of sexualizing women also creates that um, culture of entitlement to women, et cetera, that perpetuates rape, you know? Mm. So we also have to hold the men accountable as opposed to always having the conversation about what women should do to stop rape. Okay, so if I walk into a police station and I report rape and, you know, they, they ignore it and ask all kinds of questions that makes it sound like it's really not a case, how do I escalate the issue? What do I do next? Who do I go to? I think, you know, the Ghana Police Service has um, um, the PIPs, which is supposed to, you're able to call in or file a complaint. And I know it works very well because we've sent some stuff through PIPs um, where you're supposed to actually let them know that, look, I went to the police station and this is on my charge, etc. And um, they take it up. You can reach out to NGOs like myself to let us know what's going on with your case. And we've watched brief because mm. the criminal matters between the state and the accused person. We've watched brief on certain uh, rape cases to ensure that justice is, um, is okay. delivered, you know. So is there a law that, that, okay, is there a law that penalizes parents who agree to settle the case out of court and as a result received some money just to silence their child? Well, it's a criminal matter, so it's actually not between the parents. It's between the state and the accused person. But there's no explicit law that says that um, if you take, settle it out of court, um, you can't be held accountable or etc. But we have to discourage that. But sometimes you have the police officers themselves who are telling the parents to settle it out of court. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I don't think, I think whether or not you agree to pursue the matter or not, it's a criminal matter. It's be between the state and the accused person. So they can, they have a right to continue the matter. Um, okay, so so Dr. Newman, at that point where your parents agrees that maybe we're going to receive money and settle this out of court, what kind of effect is it going to have on the child? And moving forward, what does, does it communicate to the outside world? Uh, the, you know, the, the regardless of the steps that they take, they would have to realize that there are major psychological implications on the child. And so they should look beyond... Uh, saving face and that activity and seek help even even for the child and you know the the thing about uh, parents deciding not to report it is basically because they don't really understand what what rape is and the impact of that rape so it's like the child doesn't matter you know whatever the child thinks it doesn't matter whatever the experiences are it doesn't matter mm. and that and that really does damage the child because when a child receives justice, you know, for being raped, you know, that justice alone is part of the healing for the child. Is you it know, really? Was, uh, oh, it's, it, it does. It, 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 it brings a certain healing for the child. When the child knows that this person who hurts me, mm -hmm. right, has been punished for what they did. You know, I was having a, a conversation with a, a lady who was raped 
at age eight by a 16 year old boy hmm. right and 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 and, and she be, she started beaming with smiles when a year after when she started narrating that a year after the guy died you know the fact that the guy died a year after raping me you know mm -hmm. immediately she started talking about that aspect you know suddenly her, she, her mood changed from being sad to to being happy that just something happened to my uh, the one who raped me mm -hmm. so parents would have to realize that when a child receives justice for being raped that justice alone is part of the healing for the child you know so yeah. covering it up you know adds on to the already traumatic, you know, experience and all the psychological things that the child may, may be going through, right? And it also tells, you know, uh, it depends, the, the level of the age of the child, the experiences of the child would, would, would affect the interpretation the child, you know, assigns to that kind of activity, uh, the, the settlement activity. Because, mm -hmm. for example, if a child doesn't feel loved in the house yeah. and something terrible happens to that child like rape, and the parents cover it up. It adds on, reinforces the child's perception that my parents don't love mm -hmm. Right? Then also, if they don't listen to her, it reinforces the child's perception about the fact that my parents don't care about my opinion, they don't care about things about me. Yeah. And that can also take the child into some other psychological problems, which may probably we'll talk about. You know, cool. so, so settling it, you know, on that level without the consent of the child, without doing the right thing, adds on to the pain and the, and the kind of perception that the child would have about that kind of, the, the whole experience. Because receiving justice itself is part of the healing process for the child. Is there any study that links rape victims to sexual immorality? Um, there are all kinds of studies around it. I don't know, I, I can't give you specifics, but there are studies around it. But I have in my practice realized that anybody who has gone through some form of sexual abuse in the past, one, their perception about sex changes. Mm. It becomes a traumatic, a, 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 you know, a, something for them, such that anybody who sleeps with them afterwards reminds them of that sexual you know, experience. Two, it takes them, it can take some of them into perversive sexual behaviors, where some may even use sex as a revenge, mm. you know, on men. Some may use sex as a way of even coping with that uh, you know, traumatic sexual experience. Yeah. It gives them a certain perception about men, that men are predators, they are, they are, uh, they are, they are dangerous. They are, so it may even affect their marital decisions in future. Some women may even go into same-sex relationships because they feel that it's safer and okay. an escape from a certain environment with a man. Mm. You know, so there are all kinds of, some may even get addicted to pornography and masturbation, and some may, you know, all kinds of perverse sexual behaviors may follow a rape act activity. So actually, rape is a door to mm. all kinds of sexual things, even in the past. So it's not just, and there are a lot of parents whose kids have, got, have become something else because they were raped. But the parents do not know that it was that it was, that initiated yeah. this kind of sexual behavior. In that case, I mean, and, and, and it goes beyond. In that yes. case, then I believe that seeing a psychologist is the way to go. You know, they are, they are, for example, the psychological problems are huge. Post-traumatic stress disorder, where they relive the whole experience, right? They become heightened about any similar, you know, event. They become irritable. They can't sleep. They have flashbacks. They have nightmares. They become socially redrawn. You know, then also major depressive episodes. Then also uh, use of substances to cope with that traumatic event. You know, like alcohol, like uh, drugs. Mm. You know, some uh, even the, the fear about the future and being in the same space with a man and all that. You know, it is the anxiety relating to the future and all kinds of things. So, so you, they necessarily have to be attended to by a psychologist. I know okay. some people who were raped, you know, as ch as children, and sexual things began with them. Now they are older, and the thing still persists. So, if, for example, a, a, a young girl is raped and they receive help, it mm -hmm. stops all kinds of psychological sequelae and all kinds of problems that may linger on into adulthood. So, yeah. everybody who has been raped need a proper assessment by a psychologist and help because when that happens, it stops 
certain things, you know, to a large extent, from happening to the child, you know, following that that episode. Okay. So it, it is not it is not okay to just settle it out of court or just say that uh, the person is has been jailed. Uh, so mm -hmm. that's it. Whether the person is jailed or not, or there is some justice for the rape victim or not, they will still need some further assessment and help uh, by okay. a, a professional counselor or psychologist. Femi. What happens in a situation where there's false accusation? Because as much as we know that victims are coming out to tell their stories, uh, what's the guarantee that all those stories are true? So in the case of false accusation, what happens? In the case of false accusations, when you, you go to trial, the, the burden of proof is on the, he who alleges must prove. Mm. So the burden of proof is on the prosecution. So they have to build their case. So it, you're hoping that in the, course of the trial, there won't be evidence to be able to convict the person who has been falsely accused. You mm. know, um, I think that's the only um, recourse that one has. Of course, there have been times when sometimes because of, you know, the nature um, of the accusation, they've, people have actually gone to prison for on a false accusation. I remind okay. you of one of the instances where um, this teacher was um, arrested for rape for mm of a 16-year-old, uh, um, I think he was teaching or something. Mm -hmm. And the um, child was, uh, the person, the victim apparently got pregnant and he was in jail for about 14 years. And it was only after he appealed that they had um, a DNA test done on the child and realized that the child wasn't his. Wow. That's what exonerated him, you know. So, and then fortunate event that there's um, a false accusation, you it's you really have to rely on the evidence to be able to, prove the case mm -hmm. and um, th I think that's that's the only recourse that you have. So what happens to the person who makes the false accusation? If you're found to be lying, can you also go to jail? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Because it's such a grave um, 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 offense to put on somebody that hasn't done it. You know, people lose their whole lives. This man in question lost 14 years of his life, his children, his family, everything. So, of course, they need to be penalized for it. All right. So final words before we go, Femi. What advice would you give to... Um, everyone who's watching at this point? Uh, my best advice would be that um, for men, men have to respect women, respect their decisions, respect who they are, and um, no is no, you know. Mm. Um, the excuse about how women are dressed or how they portray themselves, unfortunately, perpetuates the culture mm -hmm. um, for the music videos, etc. like Dr. Newman said, but that is not an invitation to rape. There's no justification to rape. All right. Dr. Newman, final words as well, briefly, so we can wrap up. It is, it, is, it, is, it is a terrible thing for anybody to be raped. And beyond that sexual activity, there's a host of problems going on with that child. And so I would advise that parents should seek justice for that child. And in addition to that, they should seek help. And okay. if you have been raped and your parents are not seeking a psychological help for you, walk into any hospital and ask, you know, if you're a child, you're a girl, you're a woman, get up or a, a, a man or a boy, just walk into any hospital and ask to see a psychologist about it because that will save you from all kinds of problems later on. Okay. And, and, and God, God, God can help you, you know, from any kind of traumatic event. All right. Let me quickly read some messages. So I think these acts should stop, and the best way is to sentence a scapegoat uh, to death so that it stops. Okay, Johnny Lantivanapoy says, I've read tons of articles and write-ups about sexual abuse, and even though it's abominable, uh, incest is gradually gaining ground these days. Just yesterday, I was very angry and torn apart by a news item of a 16-year-old girl who's been defiled twice by her own father. This is absolutely preposterous. Stray animals like rapists should be castrated. Simple. Okay, good morning, TV3. My girlfriend was raped by a pastor who lived with her, uh, with him when she was 13. Um, she left the place after JHS, and the man met her at a church program three years ago, uh, three years later, and tried again but failed. My only problem is she talks to the man on phone until recently when I was able to um, burst out about how it was hurting me. Initially, I didn't want to talk about it because it's sensitive, but now I think it's affected me and I still hate that she did that. How do I get over this? This is serious. Um, I strongly agree with what the doctor says. No one has an excuse to give after raping someone, else it will continue repeating itself 
in the world as a whole. It must not be given a pardon, okay? And I'm P.K. Beidou from Race Course Ridge Takrade. As lawyer Femi Adetola and Dr. Newman, Newman said, the issue about rape is not pardonable and a critical look must be given to it. Most girls have countless experiences of rape, but the systems in place working in our country make it difficult for the victims to be protected by the evil and ill-minded perpetrators, um, well, by the law, okay, and the evil and ill-minded perpetrators escape for, for their acts. The law must work. The perpetrators must be dealt with and education must be... Um, a regular thing okay well that's about it for our messages for today i've been speaking to dr newman arthur uh, i wish i could get your response to the guy who says his girlfriend has been raped by a pastor but my time is up so uh, i'll wrap up maybe later i'll get that information dr newman arthur is a clinical psychologist and femi adetola founder and executive director of the fair justice initiative and they offer low cost or pro bono legal services for cases that meet their specialization criteria thank you both for joining me on tv3 new day and this conversation will continue on the day show where a young woman was defiled by a policeman and this is someone that you expect to uphold the law he was the one who sexually violated her. Look forward to that conversation uh, in the subsequent weeks on The Day Show, which shows every Saturday at 10.30 a.m. on TV3. We'll